you have a prayer request that you would like to share, or maybe you have a question about the Bible, here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers. Stay tuned for a live call-in program entitled Prayer and Answers. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Prayer and Answers. I hope that you're having a great day. It's not windy out there, not too bad. It's not too cold, not too hot. It's just one of those lukewarm days, Steve, right? <laughs> a little cold, <laughs> maybe. Than lukewarm. Okay, not the appropriate expression to <laughs> use. Anyway, uh, my name is Randy Smith, and I uh, have the privilege of hosting this weekly call in talk show. We're here to take your prayer requests and uh, or any questions you have on the scripture. And with me is my co-host, Dr. Steve Kovac. And Steve, how was your week? It was okay. It was all right. It was kind of like the weather. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. Now, there, there's people living in the Northeast that uh, had some rough weather this week. Here we are in El Paso. It's very comfortable here. I want to give you out uh, some information here. The phone number is 915-779-0016. We are here to take your prayer request, and as as you tell us uh, what's breaking your heart or what needs you have or maybe about uh, a family member that's that your heart is hurting over, um, as you tell us about it, other people who are listening in will empathize with you. They'll feel it. And when we bow our heads here in the studio and begin to pray, they will pray with us. And as God's church prays, God hears, and he begins to answer. And so uh, you go ahead and call in with your prayer request. Also, if you're having trouble picking up the signal and you can hear well enough to hear this, AM is 1590. 95.9 is where we are on the FM. 89.3. I believe uh, that uh, Anthony area in Las Cruces, and then you can always listen online. You just go to KELP, uh, just Google the website, KELP Radio, and there's a button right there on the first page that says uh, Listen Live. And you can listen to that anywhere. Maybe you have a family member you want to get them to listen and participate. You can send that to them. So, again, the phone number, 915-779-0016. I had also said that as people pray, God would answer. So I thought I would share right off the bat a few answers to prayers, or almost answers. Uh, First of all, uh, particularly uh, Steve, my co-host, every time we get together, he always, we pray before the show starts, and he always prays for the the radio equipment, because a lot of times this old equipment, stuff goes down, the antenna's not tuned well, and so the signal doesn't go out, and, and Steve has that on his mind all the time. And it looks like, folks, as you have been praying, that very soon we might, it looks like down the road, we might be able to get some more computer stuff going on in here, which will help us with all of this. So you keep praying. Uh, it's almost here. And I want to thank all of you that that do pray about that. And Steve, since it's always on your mind, you want to pray for the radio station. Yes. And so, Lord, uh, you you have your hand upon the station. You have your hand upon the future of the station. And uh, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, uh, sovereignly guide the process where uh, new things will be happening here. And uh, your provision will uh, continue to expand because you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And uh, everything is yours. And all things are yours. And so, Lord, uh, we just uh, thank you for your provision and grace. And we pray that you would continue to minister through this station and uh, continue to bring people uh, that can listen and uh, an effective radio signal can help with that. And um, so, Lord, uh, we pray for uh, that as well. And we pray for continued fruit in, through this station. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Another um, uh, answer to prayer I just wanted to share with you real quick before we go to our first phone call is um, a few weeks ago, uh, we were praying for Sylvia Kane because... Um, uh, she her her pregnancy was uh, there was some difficulties going on and and uh, trying to keep her uh, her baby from coming too soon and uh, things were kind of difficult. Well, right now, Steve, right now at this moment, there is a baby shower going on 
or I guess in a few minutes, baby shower will be going on, and everything is going well with this pregnancy, and um, she'll be uh, going to the doctor again next week. In just a couple of weeks, she'll be delivering a healthy baby. So um, God answers prayers, and we get to see it all the time. So so don't deprive yourself of uh, of the assistance that you need. Bring your prayer request to God, um, and we pray for each other. So uh, give us a call here. Let's go to our first caller. Good afternoon, Minerva. Welcome once again to Prayer and Answers. Hi. Good morning, uh, pastors. I have a quick question, and I guess I need to be put in my place and understand that I cannot, um, like I like I want to think. I was... I heard this week that the they were voting on whether if they needed uh, well this was the court independent school district if they should have chaplains that they can call in like in case of an emergency to help with the kids and they voted it down they voted no so at first I was sad because, but I mean what do we expect right they're trying to take God out of the, everything so at first my attitude was how wrong that is that everybody nobody wants to accept god but then the more i thought about it and this is where i think that i need to um be put in my place i thought well i'm glad that it was uh not approved because i would not want i know that atheists and satanists would want to come out and say hey well what is right what religion why can't we also um you know, help in that in that instance. Why can't we minister to the kids? And because that's where it's going. So is that a wrong attitude to have, or should I be? What do you think? Okay, well, uh, I'll let Steve uh, address okay. this first. Okay. So it's very interesting you mentioned that. So I was reading this week that uh, there was a city, I think in Nevada, I think it was Reno. I'm not sure. Uh-huh. And they have a program where they have an in, uh, opening prayer uh, by a, uh, someone that represents uh, religion. And so uh, they brought in a guy from the Church of Satan. Right. right. And um, he, uh, to say that he was evil and his prayer was evil was, a, was an understatement. And he oh, flaunted wow. it. Um, so the problem with with a school district and a chaplain, you have to you have to remember we live in a post Christian culture, right? And we don't live in a culture that would uh, necessarily pick uh, someone who uh, even believes in God, um, but is uh, claims to be religious in some form or fashion, right? And and so they would adopt some sort of policy, and you'd have all sorts of uh, people coming in, and uh, for emergencies that. Um, would not really represent uh, Christ. Now, right. having said that, um, there are some um, districts and some um, public facilities like law enforcement generally has uh, very good chaplains that, okay. that are certified and trained and minister to people that are volunteers in the community. And so I know that the local uh, law enforcement districts have those and they're they're generally very good people and they walk with God. But um, so it, it, it all depends on the district. It all depends on the controls that they would have over those things. And the, but you're always going to run into challenges. So right. um, but it is a good thing to have someone there to minister uh, in, in times of emergency. And, and right. so it, it's it's really a difficult um, issue to, to deal with. So right. maybe I'll let you handle that from there. So in a way to respond to this, number one, Minerva, because we still do have Christian chaplains in um, in in our first responders, right. and, and because we also still have some solid Bible school clubs in some schools, and we know that our adversary would now like to do the same thing, remove that or, or put in a cross-dressing, you know, whatever as a chaplain, atheistic that worships right. Shiva or whatever as a chaplain. Let us take a moment and pray um, for these uh, 
for these chaplains for first responders that are still good, godly Christian men, particularly here in El Paso. Okay, Amen. and uh, and for these Bible clubs that still are allowed in the school, the Bible clubs that are still reading the Bible and not just having pizza parties and handing right. handing out condoms or whatever they do nowadays. Okay, so would you pray for that, please? Me? Yeah, you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You're you're you you're, you're, you're the one on the air, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Um. I don't know where to start, Randy. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll pray then. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that we still do have Christian chaplains here in El Paso for the police department. I also want to uh, pray for Terrence White as he is being raised up now and already uh, accepted in training. And it's a good and godly organization that trains chaplains for first responders duties. Thank you that there is still that place where your son's name can be mentioned and, it, and it's not gobbledygook Eastern religion. I praise you for that, and I pray for your protection for that stronghold in our government, uh, um, civil areas. And, and also, Father, I pray uh, for these Bible clubs that are in the schools that still are able to, um, to, to teach your word and to teach young people about the true Christianity and about salvation through your son Jesus and then how to walk with you and I pray that you would protect those bastions uh, those strongholds that are for your kingdom in addition Lord I want to pray for the Christian schools across the city Uh, Mm -hmm. I saw at at the night of worship at Harvest that they have a Christian school there and of course Vista Hills has a little Christian school and LifeGate has a Christian school and Emmanuel and and the Missio Day. And I pray that uh, you would provide for the parents so that they would be able to put their children in a school that does teach only Christianity uh, along with, with the uh, other things that kids need to learn. Father, uh, each one of those is under constant assault, very much like a castle that's surrounded and under siege and being choked off. And, and, then, and then you have people who dig under the walls and come into it and become a part of it and try to weaken your work there. And so I pray for the existence, for the sustenance, and for the protection for each one of these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Minerva. Right, you, wait, 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 Minerva, don't rush off. Yeah. You, you haven't got your joke yet. I was waiting for it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. All right. Steve's already covering his face, and this is a good one, Steve. <laughs> oh, he's already been annoyed so much this week, I'm afraid, Dean. But here we go. So uh, the Sunday school teacher noticed that little Johnny came a little bit late to Sunday school, and he's usually very prompt. And so she asked Johnny why he was late, and he said he was having an argument with his dad because he didn't, Johnny didn't want to go to Sunday school. He wanted to go fishing, and his dad made him go to Sunday school. And so she said, well, did he at least take the time to explain why he wanted you to go to Sunday school instead of fishing? And Johnny goes, yes. And she goes, well, what, what did, how did he explain it? He goes, well, he didn't have enough bait for both of us. Oh, that is good. Wow, that's good. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, God bless you, Minerva. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, so for those of you who are new to the radio show, I don't tell a joke to every caller, only to Minerva, because Steve couldn't take any more than that. <laughs> so uh, don't be afraid to call in. That's it. The jokes are over for, uh, for this um, edition of uh, Prayer and Dancers. Again, the phone number here is 915-779-0016, and uh, we would like to hear from you. Maybe you have a question on the Bible. And so, Kenny, what I want us to do is we'll take a break, and if you'll pray for more callers so I can blame you if there aren't any, I'd appreciate it. So we'll be back in a moment with more prayer and answers. This is Max Lakato. Tucked away in the cedar chest of my memory is a Sunday school teacher in a small West Texas church. She gave each of us a can of crayons and a sketch of Jesus torn from a coloring book. We didn't illustrate pictures of ourselves. We colored the Son of God. We used what she gave us. No blue crayon for the sky. We'll just make it purple. If Jesus' hair is red, the teacher won't mind. She taught us to paint Jesus with our own colors. 
God made you to do likewise. He made you unique so you could illustrate Christ. Make a big deal out of Him. Don't waste years embellishing your own image. Who needs to see your face and who doesn't need to see God's? Besides, God promises no applause for self-promoters, but great reward awaits God promoters. Good work. You did your job well. This is Max Locato. Hey, uh, Ted, uh, can you come here a sec? Yeah, sure. What do you need? You're a Christian, right? Uh, yeah. What, what does that even mean, to be a Christian? I, I guess I just don't get it. Oh, well, I believe. Yeah, I mean, that is, the Bible says that, you see, I um... Have you ever lacked the confidence to share your faith with somebody? The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association can help. The Christian Life and Witness Course. The three-hour class is designed to build your confidence in telling people about Jesus. Your family, friends, neighbors, anyone who needs to hear about God's love. The class is a lead-in to the Franklin Graham God Loves You Frontera Tour coming in March. And it's free. The Christian Life and Witness Course. You can find the dates, locations, and more information at GodLovesYouTour.com. Click Events. That's GodLovesYouTour.com. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Uh, We're here to uh, take any prayer requests that you have. Um, I love that commercial we just heard. Yeah, that was was great. I hadn't heard any... Yeah, from those. especially, you know, it's common that people just, well, how do I share my my faith? Um, uh, and, and we stumble. Uh, and I, I went to the course uh, last year um, with with uh, a group of other people, and it was excellent. And by the t- when you come out, if you can remember what you learned, you, it's very easy to share your faith. You don't, you don't have to be some some scholar. You don't have to worry about apologetics. It's very easy. In fact, I'm going to go again uh, just because I, I want to hear again of how to do it. I want to I want to be comfortable with this. I think you said you were going. It's my intention to go next Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning. Yeah, and they're going to have one um, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday night, I think. So they've got. Saturday, Thursday yeah. night, Saturday morning, and then they'll have Monday and Tuesday as yeah. well. Yeah, if, you, if you're wanting to find one, um, even if, I'll tell you what, even if you say, you know, God, no matter what you do, I'm not going to share my faith. Still go, because they talk a lot more than just about how to share their fa- your faith. They they really talk to you about walking with God, too. So uh, go to the Billy Graham or Franklin Graham God, God Loves, Loves You Tour. Tour. Just go to God, just Google God Loves You Tour. Dot go com. to the website yeah. and, all of, and then click on El Paso and the events are there. Well, we've got two phone calls here. Louis, let's move right away here. Good afternoon. Welcome to Prayer and Dancers. Hi. Hi, is this Stephen? Yes, it is. Okay, Stephen, what's on your mind today? Um, we have a, I'm glad my nerve of call, uh, we have a problem in Las Cruces. I do not know if it's still the same. I believe they canceled the chaplaincy program for the police and sheriff mm. department. Yeah. One lady that got in at City Hall there, and Zango. <laughs> yeah. And there that's went. that's why, Stephen, that's why I asked us to pray now, because yeah. we're just south yeah. of Las Cruces. Las Cruces is following Santa Fe, and, and uh, yeah. 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 But they elect um, these people. So. I, I know. We, yeah. But what the point is, is we have to pray right. now. Okay. You don't pray when yes. after they canceled it. It's too, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What else, yes. Stephen? They're, they're, they're working hard on us. Yeah. Um, I'm praying for a pastor here, no name said, mm-hmm. needing food for the family, um, doesn't have a regular salary uh, at the church. Mm. Uh, so I'm just on east, east side or west side of east side or west side of uh, I have a prayer this is, this is a piece of scripture from Ezekiel 24 I hope I'm not doing anything wrong uh, this is where Ezekiel's wife died mm-hmm. it is very well very little known there very few concordances have it probably not even on a computer uh, it's Ezekiel 34, verse 15, through the end of the chapter. Do you know his wife died? Uh, 
the word of the Lord came to him that his wife was going to die. Yeah. And he went on with living. Yeah. He did. He wasn't supposed to make any mourning. He just went on with living. And it's an inspiration to me. I don't know if it's anybody else that has gone through this horrible situation. But uh, at verse 18, he says, So I spoke to the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died. And the next morning I did as I was commanded. And the people said, Will you not tell us what these things are? mean to us that you behave so can you could you elaborate a little i think people sure. need comfort and i think it's a very sensitive thing it's very unusual that a prophet uh, you know it's a traumatic thing yeah. but he, it's inspiring uh, it's not real known well so god uses ezekiel in several things like that okay and um let me just make a statement real quick on the radio. It's Ezekiel 24, Steve. Let me just make a quick a quick statement. Elvia, go ahead and hang on. We'll get to you in just a moment. Don't give up. Um, so, Stephen, th- th- let me share with you something that happened with, with me with the book of Ezekiel, and maybe that will explain a little bit further. Um, early on in the book, God tells Ezekiel, uh, I want you to lay on your side for 300 and some odd days this way. And this was when I was first called ministry, and I was just spending time seeking God, going, what do you want me to do? And I was reading in the book of Ezekiel, and I had been I had been um, running from God for a long time. And, and finally I said, okay, God, I'll, I'll be a minister. So uh, he, he had me read this. I want you to, he tells Ezekiel, lay on your side this, this on one side for 300 and some odd days and only eat this. And, and God said, can you do that? And I said, no. And then he said, read on. In the very next part, God says, now Ezekiel, lay on the other side for 40 days. And God asked me, can you do that? And I said, no. Which I I think just about anybody would say that. You want me to lay 300 and some odd days on one side and not, you know, he tells Ezekiel, even be bound, don't move. And uh, God was saying, well, then how can you be my man? Because this is what I experience with my children all the time. Mm-hmm. And what the reason that God had Ezekiel go through this with his wife was God was saying, this is what has happened between me and, and, and my loved one, the children of Israel. And Ezekiel, I want, I want you to experience this. I want you to feel what I feel, the loss that I feel so that you'll be able to speak about it. And so he says, uh, um, Son of man, with one blow, verse 16, I'm about to take away from you the delight of your eyes. Yet do not lament or weep or shed any tears. Groan quietly. Do not mourn for the dead. Keep your turban fastened to your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your mustache and beard or eat customary food of mourners. Do you remember when Aaron's sons burnt a uh, strange fire before the Lord in their incense and God killed Aaron's sons? Right. And he told Aaron, don't you mourn. True, I forgot about that. Yeah. So, yeah. so God, God sometimes for his, with his prophets will share his suffering so that they're better able to speak for him and to represent him. The question is, would you be willing to go through pain and suffering in order to be a good vessel for the Lord's service? That's a good question. Yeah. Would any of us? And and I what think, what I think of the think of the trauma? Yes. The, the difficulty in this man kept. But he, he, here's. Lord. But let me ask you this, Stephen: If the trauma was there and you were in the Lord's service, and the trauma was there, and through that trauma, you got to be closer to God. You got to feel his pain. He shared his experience with you, and you and he walked together through it, and you were closer to God than any time in your life. Now would you be willing to do it? Yeah, and of course. The, and but, the, the but people who... I don't, I the, don't know that trauma, but... The people who people, go through it... Think of the be- think of the beauty yes. of a man of God walking with God, and God says, "I'm going to take away the desire." Yeah, you know there are many that have left the faith because their wife or their spouse has died. Well, I mean, and maybe it's on the surface, 
but there is a lot to that. Yeah, and that's that what when you talk to people who have gone through this type of trauma and they grabbed a hold of Jesus and walked with him through the trauma, when they come out the other side, Stephen, they say, I don't ever want to go through it again, but I am so glad I did because I got to, I felt his touch. I heard his words. He was right in my heart comforting me. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because yep. you're... It's in those times that we experience him the closest. And I was talking to a brother today who has just come through weeks of agony. And I said to him, Brother, I have a message for you. I have two things that God told me this morning that I'm supposed to share with you. Number one is this. When Jesus was on the cross in exceeding agony, he looked down from the cross and he loved and said, Father, forgive them. Yeah. That, that this is God. When you're in the agony and you think that you can't love, that is the exact time to love. The second thing is, the reason you went through all of this is God was answering your prayers. You said, I want to become more like Jesus. I think Ezekiel is, a, is an inspiration because he does not, let, he lets go yes. of all that, all that, you know, many people just, you know, they, they can't let go of it. Yeah, the delight of he his eyes. A, yeah, I know. But he does, he lets go immediately. Have you, let's have, go. Stephen, have, he, you, have you ever gone through something like that? No, no, oh, I've, right. had, I've had other, but uh, I have a friend of mine, uh, she's now my wife, um, uh, uh, she's going She's going through it, mm. going through that, that tunnel, and I think that others may uh, see some some beauty in this, yes. uh, from this prophet, and this is not, this is, uh, you shall neither warn, mourn, nor weep, nor shall your tears run down. Uh, do not cover your lips. Do, you, uh, do not eat man's bread of sorrow. If that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, then the people said, "Will you not tell us why you behave so?" Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. It, it is the bride. I also have another question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. what I'm Go ahead. And that is on a, a Genesis twenty-six. Okay. Are you familiar with it? All right. This is on I, Isaac. Yeah. Isaac, his servants do three wells. They dig three wells. <laughs> yeah. Most ministers do not talk about this. Yeah. Isaac is a tremendous inspiration to me. Fascinating individual because they fought over the wells. Yeah. And I, could you, could you elaborate some on this? I, I think there's spiritual significance yeah. in this chapter. All right, so Isaac's having some problems, and, and I want you to remember that God had called Abraham to come out of Ur of the Chaldeans. He was going to make a people just for himself, right? And mm -hmm. Isaac now is the son of that, and this, this is so important, Stephen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you remember that Lot is caught up in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and he's so compromised there because of it. So Isaac now has to not be with the world because he's going to be God's servant. He's going to bring about the Messiah. He's going to bring uh, the truth that there's only one true God to, to a pagan uh, world. And so uh, he, he's there by Abimelech. That's, that let Abimelech represent the things of this world. Then he digs a well, but he's too close. And so they fight over it because God's going, I don't want you this close to this people, and move back. And so he digs another well. It's with the third well. He's finally far enough away. They ain't going to fight about it anymore. God wants you to be not, in, not of the world. You're to be in the world but not of it. And he, he's moving Isaac away so that Isaac won't worship Abimelech's gods. He'll be true to the one true God. And I wish Christians could get this and just, like, for instance, for us, how would we do it today? Turn off your television. Yes. Come, come out. Come and be separated. Don't be polluted by the things of the world. Don't be too close. Yes. Spiritually speaking, okay? Is this, is this water 
we did the day to the song Springs of Living Water. I mean, maybe no relationship, how happy I am. Yeah, so, yeah. It and could there be a relationship? <laughs> well, not really, for, only for this reason. For the Jewish people, living water was a spring. It wasn't a well. You had to wash in living water. It had to come from a spring. And it, it's water that is coming up and it is flowing out. It's going somewhere. It's living water because it's, it's, it's so pure because it's coming up. And that's why Jesus was saying, Jesus was saying, I'll give you living water. That means there will be burst open in your heart, in, in that, that ground, a place where, where fresh water is going to bubble up and it's going to flow out of you and it will never stop coming up. It'll never go dry. And it will come I, out of you and to others. That's living water. It's a purity and a holiness. Isaac, Isaac then was too close to the world. Yeah. I, yeah. He I, has to be. He has to be true to the one true God. And when we're too close to the world, we get polluted. And part of it, you know, that can be part of the story. The the other part of it is there was contention over these wells that yeah. he was given by Abimelech and. The people uh, who had been um, living there uh, wanted that, and he didn't want to cause a conflict as well. And so, uh, if you if you read the text, uh, he is he is going for a place where where God is going to give him peace with his neighbors as well. I, I would like to share with you from verse twenty three. From there, he went up to Beersheba, and this is going to be a very important point. In, guard, in in Bible history. And that night the Lord appeared to him. Once he got there to Beersheba, yes. then God appeared. I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I will bless you and will increase your numbers. And then he builds an altar right there and he calls on the name of the Lord. So it's in this process of these, of these difficulties that he gets to this place where God wants him to be. That's beautiful. Thank you for uh, Steve, and that. thank you for calling. You're a great encouragement to me because I haven't heard from you before. So thank you for calling. Well, I think I called you earlier <laughs> this year. I okay. See the trees. Um, we also have a trees. Uh, there have been 512 new churches, if I'm allowed to, built mm -hmm. in southern Sudan. Oh, praise by God! By Samaritan's Purse. Yeah. We are praising the Almighty. Yes something fierce about this. This is no small thing. Right. Before we uh, go off the air, Stephen, um, before Stephen and I sign off, we'll take a moment and just give him praise for that, okay? Yes. I've got, I've got two calls waiting, so I have to move on, but thank so, you for sharing that. Good. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Good afternoon, Elvia. Are you still there? Yeah. Who is this? Randy? This, this is Randy, and sitting right next to me is Steve. What's on your mind? My real name is Socorro El Barriel Longoria. You invited me a long time ago to your church. Oh, my. Did you come? Yes. <laughs> Please pray for me because I'm going to have three babies from my husband, Jesus Christ, and I'm planning to move to Mexico, to Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. I don't like that rules from USA. Okay, well, good. Well, let us pray because Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, needs a believer in Jesus to share the gospel over there. So I'm going to pray for you right now, okay? So how have you been? I have been great, but LV, I've got somebody else waiting, so I'm going to pray for okay, you, okay? bye. Take bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will help LV move over to Juarez. I love the fact, Father, <laughs> that that we can travel back and forth across the border. I pray that you will bless her, that she will know you intimately. I pray that you will set her free from any falsehoods that she might have picked up along the way and that she will be a light and a witness to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I, I need my voice to rest, so I'm going to push the button, Steve, and you talk to Ray, okay? Okay. Here we go. Hi, Ray. Hey, how are you? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, this is not your pastor speaking. This is uh, this is Steve. This is Steve. Yeah. How are you? Okay. How are you today? Well, I'm doing good. Yeah. He and Randy spent a lot of time talking, so. Um, so we had to cut him off. So uh, he he he, he, <laughs> he needs to rest. So, well, well, how okay. can I help you? Okay. Well, uh, we need to pray for my neighbor because I was I was up on the roof 
and my neighbor came out and started yelling at me from across the street. W- were you fiddling on the roof, Ray? Yeah, yeah, he, what? Can't, he can't help himself, Ray. <laughs> Just ignore. So uh, do what you oh, sometimes God. do at church. Ignore him. <laughs> This time, no, Kenny face palmed. Yes, just uh, when he says things, sometimes you know how you tune him out. Sometimes, Ray. Yeah, you know you, you, that would be a good thing to do now. So, um, yes. So he was yeah. he was yelling at you for no reason. No, she was yelling. She at was me. okay. Yeah. Did yeah. she just not like you um, being your neighbor, or what's the story? No, she just start, she just started yelling at me across the street. Okay. She started, Ray, Ray, hi, Ray, hi, Ray. She's only seven years old. Her, it's my uh, neighbor's daughter. Okay. So she's a. Uh, it just made it a uh, very comical because I was uh, I'm up here and I haven't seen her since last year. Okay. And uh, and when every there she sees me, uh, uh, she just she's always like that. She just yells, "Hey, how are you?" So I go over and I say hi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, she, she's just a fun little kid. Okay. Yeah. Sounds so like a. Can we talk nope. for her and her family? Okay. We can do that. So sounds let, good. That sounds good. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for Ray. Thank you for being a good neighbor. Yeah. And uh, we pray for the, the family across the street and the little girl and, and her family that uh, takes care of her. And we pray that you would be at work in their lives, that you would provide for them and guide them and help them through whatever challenges they're facing and help them to uh, find a church home if they don't have one and to walk with you and to grow in relationship to you and continue to provide for their needs, we pray uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Um, Okay. So let's go back a little bit. And um, so as Stephen called us, he he began his uh, discussions with... um, uh, a pastor needing food and um, uh, the, um, having been a pastor in Las Cruces and um, knowing a lot of the situations of a lot of pastors who don't get paid uh, or if they get paid, they get paid very little. And, and sometimes their family uh, struggles. And um, we want to pray for uh, God's servants um, and we want to pray for for them. So let me uh, pray for that right now. And so, Lord, in the, in the name of Jesus, uh, we want to pray for uh, this uh, uh, pastor that Stephen was uh, asking us to pray for, who is who is needing food. And Lord, I know there are places that he can get food, and um, we pray, Lord, that he would help have uh, resources to find those places. Um, I know that the church I used to be the interim at East Mesa provides food uh, every week. Uh, twice a week for uh, people in need and um, that he would find those resources. But, Lord, that you would raise up people in the church so that he would uh, be provided for and that you would uh, grow uh, that church in understanding the, uh, the responsibility of being good stewards and especially of uh, providing for their pastor who is the preacher of the word, as the scriptures tell us, that they are worthy of double honor. And so, Lord, would you be at work in that situation and in many churches in this area where pastors are struggling and suffering um, because they love you and they want to serve you? And would you honor that by providing for their needs? And we want to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The other thing was he pointed out that he had called last year and and, uh, the, the people here had prayed uh, for Samaritan Purse as they were building churches in the Sudan and digging wells. Right. Now, I understand why, you know, Stephen so interested in Isaac's wells, because uh, yes. Samaritan's Purse does that type of stuff. Um, and, and of course, we need uh, uh, water uh, to live on. And then God also gives us spiritual water. But 500, and I can't remember the exact number, but over 500 churches since last year planted in uh, Sudan. That's pretty amazing. Yes. So you want to give God thanks for hearing prayers? And now, was it southern or northern Sudan? Don't know. He didn't say, okay. so I don't know. So because there's, there's still a conflict between the two yeah. territories. Yeah. And so in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that there's a lot of conflict that goes on between Muslims and Christians in Sudan. 
and there's conflict in the government over um, uh, the persecution uh, that occurs when uh, the Muslims take over and uh, take control. And uh, we want to thank you, Lord, for providing for the churches in Sudan. I think it's southern Sudan. And we want to pray, Lord, that you would continue to provide and that you would help them to stand up strong in in their faith in the midst of difficulties and persecution and and hunger and famines that often occur in that area. So, Lord, thank you for the work of Samaritan's Purse. And uh, Stephen was talking about those wells and the importance of wells uh, in in the Bible uh, for providing uh, the ability to live. And how you provided those wells, uh, even to Isaac. Um, We want to pray that you would continue to provide in these very needy areas, Lord, and continue to use Samaritan's Purse. And we're thankful for the Franklin Graham Association that helps with that and, and leads that as well as his evangelistic ministries. And as we heard about, uh, him and his, and the commercial, uh, that we heard before, we, we are grateful that he's coming here. Uh, to present a message of the gospel and pray that you would uh, be at work in churches, be at work to bring uh, volunteers that can pray with people who are going to come forward, help them to attend the Christian Life and Witness class, and just be at work, Lord, uh, in convicting people of their need to share and to serve. And and, uh, as the commercial said, it's, 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 it's easy to do if we... Uh, learn certain things and trust in your spirit and just tell tell them our story. So, Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy and your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me run something by you, Steve, just to... Uh, uh, you're going to get hit by surprise with this because I want to get... You've never done that before. <laughs> I no. want to get your... <laughs> I just want to get your raw impression. Okay, I'm not going to give you not going to give you time to think it through. I want to get the you know how they do the you know, they show you like an ink thing and then you are supposed to say the first word that comes to mind. I want to do that with you on something that happened last week. Okay, okay, And and just happened right now about 90 seconds ago. Okay, okay. so it happened now twice to me in the last few days. And I just want to see what your what impression you get from this. Okay. Uh, First of all, last week I had a, a lady call. And said, is your church open? And I said, what What do you mean by open? And she goes, right now, is your church open? Um, my uh, boyfriend is agnostic, and his uh, sister is uh, in ICU, and we're trying to find a place to pray. And I said, um, well, right now the church is locked. Um we, we have our times of service and so forth, and it's open during the week when the school's there, but right now it's locked. But there's a, there's a chapel at the hospital, and she said, well, the, the chapel has been locked for two weeks. They, they say they can't even find the key. And so, um, and, and remember the word agnostic means I'm not sure whether or not there's mm-hmm. a God. That not, means I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He wanted a place to pray. Um, and I, I told her, where do you live? And she, she told me, and I said, well, I'll, I'll go and unlock it. And they went in to our church and they just prayed together for an hour. Well, right now, just 90 seconds ago, I just got a phone call on the church telephone line. I have it forwarded to my cell phone so that I can talk to the people that are calling. And she's the same question is your church open. And I said, uh, I, what, do, what do you mean by open? Because some, some people might, you know, is it closed forever? And uh, she said, I mean, are the doors unlocked? And, and I go, no, not right now. I don't think so. I think there's, there, and she said, well, I'm just trying to find a place to pray. So what what goes through your mind when you, when you think, and, and by the way, the first lady, she said, you don't know how many churches I've called trying to find one that was open because I want a place to pray. So what goes through your mind with that? Well, I, you can speak of it in different ways. So my rational mind speaks of security issues. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and um, that, that when somebody's not there, you can't just leave. Right, the you can't leave open. your door open. Yeah. yeah. So what I would uh, generally do is, uh, if like you did with the, the lady, if you're able to come and uh, open it for a period of time, that's that's fine. Um, but it just means that that uh, something's stirring in their hearts. Yeah. And so I would probably suggest praying for them over whatever they want to pray for. And then if I'm able or if I, if the church door can be open to make it available. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but but I, 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 you know, so it's just it's just uh, maybe God uh, talking to you about uh, um, having people there and when you can. So here's what went through my mind. Uh, and thank you. I just wanted to get your raw impression without any time to think. I know it's not fair, but uh, it's, it, it's enlightening. You do that all the time. I do. Yeah, yeah. Here's what went through my mind, and I was able to tell her, well, you know what? There just so happens to be a baby shower going on right now because I know the women who are at that baby shower mm-hmm. are more than equipped to minister to this girl's needs. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter to me what her needs are. There are good and godly women right now in that room. And I, I was thinking, it is wonderful that to have a church that is active where odds are the doors are going to be open because it's something is always going on to where I can tell somebody and, and that the, the people of God are, are well equipped, that I have confidence that whatever her problem is, I could invite her and say, you just go over there right now and just join with them, and somebody will be there that can pray with you. Uh, I do not know if she will, but mm-hmm. wow, that, that was something. But the other thing that went through my mind, and now this, I know you may not agree with this, and but I'm just going to say it anyway. <clears throat> Searching for words. I'm trying to be gentle. <laughs> and that's so rare for me. <laughs> so anyway, um, there's 500 churches in the city of El Paso as of 2020. Um, the last number I saw as far as the number of church-going Christians in the city of El Paso is 50,000. And that's a population in the in the Census Bureau. I think 770,000, I think, may have been the last census. And there's 50,000 Christians out of 770,000. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. And so there was a night of praise and worship Thursday night where it had been advertised for some time. And it was supposed to be a night when people from all of the churches in the city would come together and praise and worship their sovereign king, Jesus Christ. And out of the 50,000 people, out of the 500 churches, Kenny, there were roughly 500 people there, one person per church. Out of the 50,000, now there were 50,000 people in the Sun Bowl screaming and yelling for Notre Dame, parked two miles away and walked to the Sun Bowl. Um, What a crowd. But when the Lord Jesus offered an invitation for people to come and worship and pray and bring all of their prayer requests to him. Um, There was only 500 out of the whole city. And um, what went through my mind when I heard these two people going, is your church open? I just wonder, is he going to replace us? Is he stirring people who don't know him (laughs) because the people who do know him are asleep? When I read the book of Romans, judgment on God's people is not, well, judgment, when, not on God, when, according to Deuteronomy, he chastises us. He, he says, know that in your heart, that as a man disciplines his son, so I discipline you so that you will serve the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. And so he, he will chastise us. The judgment of God is when he just leaves us alone and just lets us slip off into into deep sleep. And he's going to have a people. 
that are his. He's going to have a people that love him. He, that, I mean, this is this is guaranteed. Before he ever created the, the 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 first molecule in the universe, he had already predestined that he were going he was going to have a people whose hearts were towards him. And as I'm seeing th- these last two phone calls, I'm just wondering. And then and then at the prayer breakfast this morning. There was somebody there that that doesn't go to church, and 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 as we were doing prayer requests, and he just said, I, I asked him, "What can we pray for you?" And he said, "Can you pray for my lost soul? Is God raising up right now our replacements?" It's a good question. Um, replacement is a um, is a kind of a loaded term there. <laughs> um, and God, God is um, well. You, all you have to do is look what is what what happened during the pandemic in a, in yes. a general sense. Yes, and the people who were already half asleep um, just went totally asleep. Oh, totally asleep, and, and some woke and, up, and, and and some woke up. Yeah, and 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 um, so the number of of I was reading the statistics, and uh, the number of uh, Americans that stopped going to church. Yeah, in a uh, 25-year period, but um, particularly uh, you know, over the period of time, was 15% of our population stopped yeah. going to church. Now, probably a th- at least a third of that happened during the pandemic. Yeah. And um, that's millions of people. Yeah. And, and so God, God is, um, whether God caused the pandemic or allowed it, um, it he did is, a great he, work. He, he's he's working to um, uh, not just chastise, uh, but sift. Yeah. And so there is a sifting here, and it, and the, the sifting you can experience by going to almost any church. And, and what what's when Stephen was calling about Ezekiel, and I was saying God was telling Ezekiel, "I want you to do it this way because I want them to ask." And God speaks about about issuing a, a certificate of divorce to his people. Basically, it's just, it's not about even, I, I'm, I'm going to punish you, or the worst punishment in the world is God just walk away and leave you where you are. I, I think that God's on the move constantly. That's why it talks about us, so we, we will serve the Lord our God by fearing him and by walking in his way, not sitting in his way, not standing with him, but walking. And what happens is, is God is on the move. And if you're still where you were a year ago, <laughs> he may have walked off and left you. Yeah. And the the other part of Ezekiel that I think Stephen kind of centered on the, the interesting themes in Ezekiel is when he leaves uh, the temple. Yes. And, I leave and, your house and, desolate. And, and so he shows Ezekiel. He yeah. takes him. Yeah. Uh, by whatever means. And 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 shows him him what the temple was like and how he was leaving and he wasn't yes, coming back. Wasn't come. And then Jesus says the same thing in the temple: "Your house is left to your desolate." And he walks off. Yeah. And I just, I, you know, folks, don't let Jesus walk off. I mean, grab a hold of his robe and gra- and hang on. Now, let's. We just got a few minutes left, but thank you, thanks Jerry for calling in. What's on your mind today? Uh, my mind, uh, my mind is answering your question about replacing us. Uh-huh. Did not, did not Jesus say, "I will never leave you nor forsake you"? Um, yeah, but we can leave and forsake Him. Right, right. But that doesn't mean He's replacing us. That all oh, that means that He is. Re- he, we reject Him. Yeah. He's not rejecting us. When I'm saying so replacing, not... Jerry, what I'm saying is, is if the church is filled with with Christians whose hearts aren't for Him. Is he mm-hmm. raising up some people? Is he going to lead some other people to the Lord to take our place in service and worship? That, that might be a good thing cause, to make us jealous. Yes, exactly. So that we we, we could get, get off our, our blessed assurance. and God bless you, him. Jerry. That was the whole point. My, the reason I said it was because as soon as I say to people, well, you know, maybe you can just go ahead and watch TV all week long, and it's okay. God will just find somebody else to worship him. Immediately they go, well, nobody's taking my place. <laughs> that's my chair. <laughs> yeah, that's my chair. <laughs> so thank you, Jerry. You got the point. And not only that, you said the sermon I didn't <laughs> I was trying to not say. Yes, let well, God's people be jealous. Yes, and, and we're supposed to be challenged. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Yeah, because we don't know it all yet. Right. You Thank, know, you. Thank when you, we, Jerry. When we, 
when we think we know it all, then we're in trouble. So, Jerry, let's then do this, because I say that because I love, I, I, I love those who are asleep right now. I mean, my, my heart is breaking. My heart isn't breaking for Jesus that he only had 500 people to worship him. My heart is breaking for the people that missed this, this, this passionate worship of God that night. So, Jerry, would you pray for the church in El Paso? Could I get, could I get you to do that for us right now? Uh, yeah, I guess so. You're putting me on the spot here, but I know, I'll brother. do my best. All right. I'll do my best. Heavenly Father, please hear this prayer. We humbly come before you to ask mm. for your forgiveness mm. and for your blessings on the city of El Paso mm. and this nation. Yes. Because what occurs in this nation trickles down to portions in El Paso. Mm. And we need, to, we need to come to understand that none of us are perfect. Mm. The only one that was perfect was crucified yes. for our sins. And please, Lord, please. Let us know that we are all brothers and sisters, and we, we none of us are perfect, and we need to turn towards you to save this not only city, but this nation and this world through your Son, our Christ, and the blood He shed on that cross. Amen. Jesus, the Christ. Yes. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. Yes. And thank you for your Son. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Jerry, if that's how you pray when I put you on the spot, you're doing (laughs) great, brother. And, Jerry, I've got to tell you this, too. What this does for me is I I talk to God and say, "Am am I less in love with you than I was? Am I falling asleep? It's a... You know, we we need to challenge each other, don't we, Jerry? I mean, to say, hey, how are you, how are you doing? Are you awake, brother? You know. Well, that's the whole thing about the Book of Revelations about the, the churches and the seven candles. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you, Jerry, so, and and thank you for thank calling you, in. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Okay. And 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 God bless the radio station. Yeah. Great radio station. Thank you, Jerry. We need it. Right. Good Lord, please take care of this radio station mm. also. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, Steve, we had more callers today. Kenny prays. I don't know when Kenny prays during that first break. It just lines them up. There you go. <laughs> so that's your ministry, Kenny. So um, I want to thank all of you who called in, and, and it's such an encouragement to us. And uh, if the Lord is willing and tarries until next Saturday, we'll be back with more prayer and answers. God bless. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at this same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus.